You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible The Superscription to the Book of Isaiah Unlike many of the prophetic books, the Book of Isaiah has more than one superscription. Chapter 2, verse 1 The word that Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem sounds like the superscription to many of the other prophetic books, though it's quite short for a book as large as Isaiah. Chapter 13, verse 1 is a superscription, but it doesn't read like a book superscription. The oracle concerning Babylon that Isaiah son of Amoz saw. Despite similarities to Nahum, Habakkuk and Malachi, it reads more like the heading to a sub-collection or to an individual speech. And compare 15 1a and 17 1a. In 20 1 to 2a we again have something more like the local heading scattered through Jeremiah in the year that the commander-in-chief who was sent by King Sargon of Assyria came to Ashdod and fought against it and took it at that time the Lord had spoken to Isaiah son of Amoz saying so there are several superscriptions but most of them don't read like superscriptions to a book on the other hand there are also dramatic changes in the book that aren't covered by superscriptions the change from prophecy to story in chapter 36 and the change from Assyria to Babylon as the empire in view in chapter 40 and following and the whole change of tone in chapter 40 verse 1 they're not signalled by any kind of superscription if we accept that 13 1 and 21 to 2 look like local headings rather than book superscriptions we're still left with 1 1 and 2 1 and also chapter 6 because chapter 6 reads both like a call account and also like the beginning of something not least with its dating right up front so the book of Isaiah has a complex opening with possibly three beginnings in 1, 2 and 6 a bit like the ending of a Beethoven symphony where he just can't seem to get stopped the book of Isaiah almost doesn't seem to be able to get started until we get to chapter 6 the other thing to notice about the superscription is that it is thoroughly Judean the vision of Isaiah son of Amoz which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah kings of Judah there are several things to notice here there's that stress on vision which he saw Chazon is the preferred Judean word for prophecy Jose Sia is very strongly Judean, Navi was much preferred in Israelite texts and by repeating the word the Judean character of this book is underlined and the object of his preaching Judah and Jerusalem no mention of Israel and is this mention merely a mention of the territory and the city or is it by its mention of the city political and theological signalling the interest of the book because only the kings of Judah are named yet it was not until the reign of Hezekiah the last king named in that list that Israel ceased to exist as a political entity now older scholarship probably understood this as representing in some way Isaiah's close connections to the Judean royal court maybe or maybe it signals the editors of the book of Isaiah's failure to be interested in Israel or focus on Jerusalem the holy city and that focus we'll see as we read on further into chapter 1 in the next podcast in this series but for now a couple of things we can draw just from the superscription firstly the book has probably a complex redactional history it's been edited maybe by several people and maybe at different times certainly it wasn't written by one person sitting down in their study and writing the book at one sitting difficult with 66 chapters that and the other thing is that it is a book focused on Judah and Jerusalem and we do well to remember that as we read on Bye for now.